This frog is levitating because there's iron in its blood and it's in a really strong magnetic field. That magnetic field is made by using an electromagnet, which is a coil of current carrying wire. This video is going to tell you everything you need to know about how a magnetic field is formed around a current carrying wire. What I've got set up here is just an ordinary bench power supply and it's set on two volts. And there's one loop of wire that passes from positive down up through this block of wood and straight up back round to the negative side of the power pack. Now when I turn that on there's going to be a current flowing in that direction from the positive side up back round to the negative side. Nothing special there so far. But except when I place a plotting compass, now you remember compasses designed to point north in Earth's magnetic field, align themselves with any magnetic field. So an interesting thing happens when I move this compass around my piece of wire. I see that it actually changes direction, the direction the compass is pointing. It keeps changing direction every time I move it around the current carrying wire. Why is that? Well, we must say there is a magnetic field around this wire. Now, what shape is that magnetic field? Well, if I use more than one, I can actually show you the shape of that magnetic field. If I place four compasses around the current carrying wire, you can see the magnetic field is circular. They're pointing round in like a little circle. Now, what direction is that? And how are we going to remember what direction the magnetic field is around a current carrying wire? We use something called the right hand grip rule. So imagine you're gripping something. Your thumb would be pointing upwards and your fingers curled around. Now the thumb is what we call in the direction of the current. The thumb is pointing in the direction of the current. And the fingers are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. The thumb is pointing from positive to negative, and the fingers are pointing from north to south. So the, if I hold my thumb up like this, the current is going upwards and the magnetic field is going round in this direction, the direction my fingers are pointing. What if I actually change that direction of current then? I'll just change on my power supply the direction the current is travelling. Well now all of the compasses spin round because now the field is pointing in the opposite direction around the wire. Now my thumb would be pointing downwards so my fingers are now pointing around the direction in, if I look at it, a clockwise direction. Now if we were to take our current carrying wire and wrap it in a loop and we'd have a situation like this, where on this side of the wire, the current is travelling upwards. And on this far side of the wire, the current is travelling downwards. If we use our right-hand grip rule, we can see that the field on this right-hand side, with the, what, the current travelling upwards, is going to be in this direction, here. And I'll just draw another field line. Again, inside the loop it's going to be travelling in that direction and outside the loop it's going to be travelling in the opposite direction. But on the other side, the current's travelling down. So I turn my hand over, my right hand grip, and I can see that actually here the current is moving around the wire in the opposite direction. Now what do you notice? Well, the field, when it's inside the loop, is all travelling in the same direction. The field outside the loop are both travelling in the same direction as well. We want to levitate a frog, so we're going to need a much stronger magnetic field. One way we can do that is to just increase the current, but another way we can do that is to have more coils of wire, more loops of wire. We're still going to have the current here travelling from positive round the loop to negative, so the current will be upwards on these sides and downwards on the far side. All of those wires will have the same current. 
Now all of those smaller magnetic fields around all of those wires add up to one large magnetic field. And all of the magnetic fields inside the solenoid, that's the name of a series of loops of wire, are going to be travelling in the same direction. And all of those outside are going to be travelling in the opposite direction. So the same on this far side. Now that shape of that magnetic field should remind you of the shape of a magnetic field around a bar magnet. That's our standard electromagnet shape. If you found this video useful, then you may want to subscribe, and please do tell your friends. But if we do want to levitate this frog, we're going to need a much stronger magnetic field still. And therefore we have to either have a really, really high current, and we're going to get then a lot of heating. So we need to cool that, and the strongest electromagnets are cooled using liquid nitrogen. Also, to get the really high current, we're going to use, have to use superconducting materials. And then maybe we could levitate our frog. Or even maybe we could levitate something more useful, like a train maybe.